Hey guys, welcome to the newest episode of the Bearded Gamer Show. As always, I'm your host, obviously the Bearded Gamer. Hello, Chris Arnone. All right, now I do want to remind you, gonna get started on Twitch TV a little bit, okay? So you head over to twitch.tv slash Bearded Gamer Show, that's me. I'm gonna try to get on there at least twice a week, live streaming something. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Right now, into my good news, bad news. So first up is a piece of good news. Now for those of you Mass Effect 3 players, so many people were just so pissed off about what came about at the end of that. Apparently a lot of loose ends were left, a lot of stories were, were unfinished, T you know, ties untied, things like that. Well, the extended edition is now out. So you can download that patch and you'll be able to get in and they, they say if you're like two missions before the very end, you can access those different endings. The other thing is they're available online. You don't actually have to go back and replay it. You could actually watch all of the extended cut endings online. Pretty easy to search for. They're, they're, they're all over the freaking place. So you can go check those out. If you were disappointed, hopefully you will be less disappointed. But let's face it, it's the internet. Y'all always disappointed. That, that's just kind of how it works. Um, some bad news, just straight up bad news. Now this is coming from, of course, the heads of Square Enix. Everybody always clamors for a Final Fantasy VII remake. Hey, I'll join them. You know, Advent Children was just kind of weird. It was gorgeous, but it was kind of weird. Final Fantasy VII, one of the greatest games ever made. It put the PlayStation on the map. And we have been clamoring for a remake of this for years. Well, here's, here's the official word on this. There will be no Final Fantasy VII remake until they make a Final Fantasy game better than Final Fantasy VII. And now when you start to think about it, it makes sense. They said the reason is, is if they make a Final Fantasy VII remake, it's sort of like admitting we can never do better and that Final Fantasy is dead. You know, we, we can never make a better game and that's not the point. They're always trying to surpass Final Fantasy VII, their absolute biggest game. They're trying to make a game that people actually love more. So they make a game that people love more, theoretically, we might actually see a Final Fantasy VII remake. Until that time, the only time we might see it is if Square Enix does indeed close the book on Final, San Fa Final Fantasy, which, you know, would be a sad day indeed. So, will we see a Final Fantasy VII remake? Big fat maybe, but probably not. That's, 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 that's the truth of it. Uh, some straight up news. So, Tokyo Game Show is on its way. It's coming, it's, it's every year, and they've started to show their exhibitor list. Now there's a couple that are missing. One of them is Microsoft. Okay, not a huge, huge surprise. They're, they're not really that big in Japan. The other one is Nintendo. Seriously, this is, I mean, Nintendo isn't on that list. And that's, that's pretty confounding because we were all pretty sure, based on their previous track record, that they would tell us what the release date was and the price for the Wii U is at Tokyo Game Show. But as of this moment, on the exhibitor list, they're not there. And they're huge in Japan. So it's really kind of mind-boggling right now exactly what's going on. So we're going to keep tabs on this, of course, keep watching the show, keep checking back. I'll keep you guys posted if anything changes on this story. But uh, very strange, uh, you know, we're supposed to be getting the Wii U sometime this holiday season. I figured at Tokyo Game Show we'd find out when, but now who knows. But we'll finish up with some good news about Nintendo. They recently, this recently came about that they were set to announce their digital distribution strategy, okay, selling games digitally to their retailers very soon, which to me is like, oh my god, maybe, maybe Nintendo finally found the internet. Yes, it's been there all along. They haven't been using it right, but there it is. <gasps> Right? Retailers have got to be a little worried, honestly, uh, but certainly, you know, consumers have to be pretty excited for this. And of course, the investors have just got to be flipping the lid that maybe they're going to really, really embrace a digital distribution strategy. Now, I know a lot of you are going, well, they got the e-store, the e-shop. Yeah, but that's a lot of older games. It's very rare that you would, you would see a brand new game actually hit the digital when it hits the retail stores, the brick and mortar stores, or anywhere nearby. So maybe they're looking to change that and they're finally embracing the 21st century. And yes, the internet, they understand it. They found it. Maybe they're finally figuring it out. That would be a good thing. All right, that about does it for the news. Let's go into a controller confessional.
So I began to ponder the other day after E3, you know, I know it's been a little while now since E3, but I was starting to think, are we starting to see the end of game exclusivity on consoles? Are we starting to see that go away? I mean, when the Xbox 360 first came out, it had a ton of exclusives. Now, a lot of this was because PS3 didn't have a very good market share. And so a lot of developers didn't necessarily want to make games for it when they felt it wouldn't sell very well. So they just made them for 360. Plus, there were some entry issues into making the code for the PS3. Well, those have gone away. Uh, but also, Microsoft was paying for a lot of exclusives. You know, they, they were buying their way, their way into these things. And uh, you know, now we see what, maybe like Halo and Forza and Fable and you know, not much else, Gears of War, but there's really not a lot. Now in recent years, Sony has really been upping the ante on exclusives. I mean, just this year we've seen things like Last of Us and uh, Uncharted is a big one for them. Uh, their new uh, PlayStation All-Stars, you know, they really cram in a lot of these exclusives. But you know, I, I think that's kind of a strategy of either playing catch up or initially trying to establish yourself. So obviously Xbox is in the driver's seat. So it's PlayStation is now trying to play catch up with these just brilliant, brilliant exclusives they're putting out. Um, but now we're seeing more of a move to DLC. DLC is becoming obviously a pretty big deal. And we saw a lot of exclusive DLC deals on both the Microsoft and Sony sides of it. It was both sides, because there were a lot of third party games that were in these first party presentations because they're getting either exclusive DLC or timed exclusivity on the DLC. Things like, you know, Tomb Raider, and uh, um, I'm not thinking of the other ones right now, but there were some on both sides. Uh, so, you know, you definitely see that, that push and pull between them, but now it's a fight over DLC rather than actually trying to make the games themselves exclusives. Now, I imagine part of this may be because it's a little cheaper to just get exclusive content rather than the entire game. I'm just guessing, but it just does make sense that it would be a lot less money to just buy some DLC or time DLC rather than an entire game. But let me explain some frustration to you. I have a story I've not told on the show, believe it or not, my story of Fallout 3. Now, when the game first came out, I got it for PS3. At the time, I was more of a PS3 player altogether. I'd just recently gotten my 360 and wasn't doing much with it yet. So I got Fallout 3. I beat this game. I got a platinum trophy in three days. I seriously played more than 60 hours in a 72 hour period. Occasionally, I fell asleep, usually while playing with a controller in my hand, or I ate, but those things were very rare. It was one of those weird gaming marathons. And then I'm waiting, and I hear about this awesome DLC coming and it comes to 360 first. And of course, they're not telling us that it will ever come to PS3. So I finally take my PS3 version, I go and sell it, I buy the 360 version, I buy all the DLC, I work my way back up, and then I find out, oh, well now it's all gonna come to PS3 too, and they released it all, like almost all in one shot, in fact, for Final Fantasy, or for Fallout 3. Still ticks me off to this day. Now see, now we know, you know, when Fallout New Vegas came, I bought it for 360, but if I got it for PS3, at least I would have been fully well aware that the DLC is coming just a little later. I didn't want to screw with it. I went and got New Vegas for 360, that way I was able to get all the DLC when I want it. <sighs> but there you go. So that was my Fallout 3 story. But this isn't really a rant about DLC. In fact, I'm excited for this new trend because as I've said before in this show, I'm all about the most people playing the most awesome games that they possibly can. Games like Limbo. You know, I'm so excited that they've recently gotten the, you know, that, that thing went wide. And you know, what is it now? That game company did a Kickstarter so that their games can go wider than just the PlayStation. You know, I'm very excited to see stuff like that happen. So maybe not everybody gets all the DLC or has access to all the DLC right when it comes out, but more people get to play great games. And I love that idea. I love that concept. So I'm totally happy and excited to see the death of the exclusive game. If the conversion is simply over to time or exclusive DLC, more people get to play more awesome games. And I love that kind of stuff. All right, that does it with my controller confessional. I'm off my soapbox. Let's end this with something I, I don't think we've seen in a little while. Burning question. So, 
as I said at the very beginning, I'm starting to do some live streaming on Twitch TV. Still kind of figuring out all the technology and maybe upping my internet bandwidth a little bit to make that stuff work. But what I want to know is, what do you want to see me play? Now, here's the plan. I'm not just going to be one of the, you know, the masses of live streamers where I sit and play for hours on end and I just talk about the game. No, no, I'm a game journalist. So I'm not just going to talk about the game I'm playing, a little bit of that too, but I'm going to talk about current events in video games. I'm going to have my other computer with a Twitter feed running, uh, you know, Google Reader, seeing what's coming up, seeing all the, all the things that are being talked about, and discuss those things while I'm playing the game, while I'm you know, discussing the game. Let's see exactly how well I can multitask there, right? But I want to know what you want to see me play. Maybe a little uh, Dota 2, you know, Defense of the Ancients 2 being made by Valve. Hmm? Beta. I could, I could get my hands on that one for sure. Uh, perhaps Diablo 3. I've been playing through this one very slowly. I have a lot of things to do, but, you know, really forced me to get in there and play a little bit more. And uh, you all will be in there with me. Uh, what about Dust 514? Okay, beta just came down. You can buy the Mercenary Pack for 20 bucks and get right into the beta starting on Thursday. That could be a possibility. I do have the technology to stream my PS3 gameplay footage, so maybe a little bit of that. Maybe something else. Is there some, you know, throw me out some recommendations. Maybe I could do a flavor of the week, change it up every single week, a new game, something hot, something awesome, something new. Let me know. Throw it down in the comments. Let me know what you want to see me play in a live stream while I talk about all things gaming. All right, that does it for this week's episode. We'll see you next time.